Good morning. I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody is doing the things we should do to control why why we are having a service, a virtual service instead of being in the sanctuary. It's going to be a while. So um, please join us each Sunday as we continue our journey to be with Jesus. Let's open our service. Let's light that third candle, the candle of joy for this third week of Advent. We light the third candle of Advent, joy. We look to John, the one you sent, to point us to your light. The light will come into our world and enlighten everyone. We have known people who have challenged us and called us, called us into God's light. They seem like John, called by God to prepare us for a deeper faith. God sent John the baptizer to prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. John called for people to repent of their sins and to live faithfully. He baptized with a cleansing water and proclaimed a new life that Christ, the one who would follow him, would bring. This Advent, we ask for God's mercy and a joyful new beginning. Merciful God, we give thanks that you send messengers like John to call us to greater faith. We ask that in these days, we prepare for you in prayer and acts of holy compassion. Forgive us and lead us to your light. Amen. Shine on us, O God of justice. Guide our path through gloom of night. Bear with us wisdom's glory. Come to us, O Christ the light. Okay. Call to worship. Come. Rejoice in our God. Let us give thanks, whatever life brings. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Let us prepare our hearts in our world for the Prince of Peace, who is, who is coming. May all who weep come home with shouts of joy. Prepare the way of the Lord and make straight the path for God's arrival in prayer, song, and service. Let us prepare for the birth of love. Okay, our gospel reading this morning <laughs> it's from the the Gospel of John, the first chapter, <laughs> six through eight, and then nineteen through twenty-eight. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. This is John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? John confessed. He didn't deny. He confessed, I am not the Christ. Then who are you? Are you Elijah? I'm not. Are you a prophet? No. Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What, what do you say about yourself? I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make the Lord's path straight. Just as the prophet Isaiah said, why do you baptize if you aren't the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? 
I baptize with water. Someone greater stands among you whom you don't recognize. He comes after me, but I'm not worthy to untie his sandal straps. This encounter took place across the Jordan in Bethany where John was baptizing. So ends this morning's gospel. Okay, our prayers for the people, our joys and concerns. I did get a call <coughs> last night from Jeanette Anderson. Her daughter-in-law was going to have surgery, and then she had and be tested for COVID. And it just so happens after I talked to her, the next day, Thursday, I got to call Wednesday night on Thursday when I talked to Jeanette. While we were talking, the surgery was taking place. So from what I understand and what she told me Thursday afternoon, she's going to be in the hospital for one or two days. So by the time we are in this service on Sunday, she might be out of the hospital. I don't know. She, there was an infection that got involved with it and the COVID and she was having a struggle walking. So keep Jennifer Anderson in your prayers. The daughter-in-law of Doug and Jeanette. And Keep Mike Snyder and Lee in your prayers. Lee's still hobbling. Mike's getting better all the time. So it's somebody to pray for. And then there's so many people that are involved with the COVID and and you have to keep them in your prayers and the sorrow that's been going, people dying, and it's it's not good, but it will get better as we continue our journey through this year. 2021 has to be a better year. With that said, let's prepare ourselves for prayer. Oh, 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 Lord, we thank you for, for giving us a reason for the season of Christmas and the, and the promise of eternal life to be spent with you and with family and friends that we have lost since, since last Christmas. The virus that has invaded our globe has caused 
great sorrow for so many of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please help us as we struggle to go forward, as we look for a cure for this disease, as we strive to spread your good news. Please, Lord, open our hearts and souls to those who have yet had a chance to experience the good news. Bless us with your dignity and grace. Line our Christmas trees with love and peace as we come to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, in just a few short days. With all that is influencing our lives, we have friends and loved ones who are in need of your healing powers. Please, Lord, Grant them relief from their pain and stress and allow them to once again be able to worship you unconditionally. As we sit in silence together in our faith, but apart and in our homes, hear our personal and private prayers. And with your divine grace, answer them with your miraculous wisdom. In your name we pray. With the words given to us by your son the night he died so that we could live. In the solitude of your homes, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, our scripture reading this third Sunday of Lent is an interesting one to me. <laughs> it begs the question, who are you in the eyes of the world? No. No, maybe, maybe that's the wrong question. More importantly, who are you in the eyes of God? 
Let's look at that question for a few minutes. Who are you in the eyes of God? Back in the um, 1950s and 60s, there was a television show. It was called, What's My Line? What's My Line? Remember it? I do. Kind of. This was one of them early game shows on the still novel contraption called television. This popular show, which was on the air for more than 15 years, featured a panel of celebrities who were introduced to an unknown guest and then challenged to guess that person's occupation or line of work. The host directed the show, which is similar to the children's game of 20 questions. The panel was allowed a total of 10 questions, which might include such inquiries such as, do you work indoors? Or did your occupation require a lot of schooling? Each no answer earned the mystery guest $5 toward the grand prize. When all 10 questions had been asked, the panelists had the opportunity to guess how the mystery guest made a living. If the mystery guest managed to stump the questioners, that person won the show and took home the grand prize of a whopping $50. Lucky him. Now back to our scripture. John the Baptist would have been a perfect guest on What's My Line? Because no one seemed to be able to figure out who he was and what he was doing. He seemed to stump the many people who, who came to him with questions. It was not only the priests and the Levites who wanted to know, who are you? Everyone who encountered John wondered about him. It actually, it actually began with his parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth. They had many questions about this unexpected child who came into their lives. The gospel provides us with more information about John than about almost any other figure in the Bible. When we piece these, when we piece these clues together, we can begin to answer this perplexing question directed to John. Just who are you? The Gospel of Luke provides great insight into John's unusual backstory. Before he was even born, Luke tells us an angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, dead, the priest as he served in the temple, alone in the, in the Holy of Holies, offering supplications to God. Zechariah encountered the angel Gabriel who announced the impending birth of this unique child and informed Zechariah that the child would be great in the sight of the Lord. Now, not surprisingly, this is where the many inquiries about John began when Zechariah questioned the prophecy. How will I know that this is so? Mm. Zechariah's apparent lack of faith prompted Gabriel to cause Zechariah to, to actually lose his ability to speak. Zechariah spent the next nine months in silence. Sometimes we need the opportunity to simply be still, to realize that God is at work in our lives. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth had all these months 
to ponder the importance of God's, God's vision for their much-anticipated son. John's destiny was foretold. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. In, in God's good time, the answer about who John was to be revealed not only to John's adoring parents, but also to those gathered for his birth. Elizabeth and Zechariah gave their baby the name assigned to him by God. And yet, and yet the question still continued. The people of the village and the surrounding area all wondered, what then will this child become? We have no we have no information about John's childhood. The next time we run into him, he's in a Judean desert as an adult. It's no wonder there were so many questions about him. John, John was an odd duck. He lived outside of acceptable society in every sense of the word. He didn't chase after followers. He expected them to tramp deep into the wilderness to find him camped out by the Jordan River. Once he had arrived, he didn't coddle them with welcoming phrases or gentle encouragement. Can't you just hear him? You brood of vipers, he roared, prepare the way of the Lord. He shouted, Who are you? The crowd asked John. Inwardly, they must have been wondering, We've been waiting for the anointed one and hoping for the Messiah sent by God. Could this be the one? But, but, but so far, it was only clear who John was not. He was not a fashion plate and will, and will not be admired for his wardrobe. He, he wore a wardrobe made of camel's hair. He was not a cul culinary elite. He dined on grasshoppers and wild honey. He was not one who bowed to power. He dared to challenge Herod's immoral lifestyle, which eventually cost John his life. The Gospel of John completes the picture of who John is, who John is not, by reminding us he himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. John echoes the theme of defining himself in the negative way by saying, I am not the Messiah. Get it? Is he Elijah? No. Is he the, the expected Masonic prophet? Prophet? Again, no. We have, we have many descriptions of who John the Baptist is not. But the original question remains, who is he? What is his line? What is he called to do? John the Baptist knows why he is there. He knows that if he is compared to Jesus, he'll come up short. John describes himself as, even, as not even worthy to untie the throng of Jesus' sandals. One might think it would be depressing to John to constantly be compared to his smarter, more capable, perhaps better-looking cousin. There's always danger of comparing ourselves to others or vying for a most popular vote. We always come up short. Who are you? Who are you? When he is asked that question, John, in essence, says, well, compared to Jesus, I'm nobody. He is the light of the world. I, it has to be said, am not the light. I can encourage you to turn to the light.
but I am not the light myself. In the eyes of the world, it would be easy to dismiss this wilderness preacher. He isn't the one everyone is waiting for. Why pay, a, why pay attention to him? Sometimes we, we even dismiss our own value and gifts because there are so many things that we are not. We may not have the gifts or abilities that many others possess. Our path may not be filled with success or acclaim. We often, we are often our, our own worst enemies and sabotage our efforts. We may all stumble over the question, who am I? What is my purpose and what is my value? We might look at others whom we admire and say with regret, I am not that person. I am not that brave, competent, successful person who seems to accomplish great things, sometimes without any effort. John the Baptist, however, demonstrates the ability to focus on one's own identity and refuse to be defined by others. John knows. John knows who he is not and is equally certain who he is. The gospel writer simply states, there was a man sent by God. Therein lies the key to John's identity. He was a man sent by God. God. John trusts that God can use him and the gifts that he has. I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. What is his line? His is path straightener. He is the announcer of good news. He is one who teaches others about Jesus. Who is this man? He is one who points to Jesus. John does what we are all called to do. He refuses to be discouraged or defined by what he is not. He, like each of us, has a calling from God. He, like each of us, is called to make people aware of God's love. He, like each of us, is called to live a life that points to God's amazing grace. It does not matter who he is not. What matters is that his words, his actions, and his lifestyle all demonstrate the renewing love and forgiving presence of Jesus. And with, with that said, it begs the question, what's our line? Our line is the same as John's. We are all called to, live, to a life that reveals God's forgiving love given for all of God's people. We are all called to a life that reveals God's forgiving love, given for all of God's people. Our line is the same as John's. 
live it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we got an announcement. Uh, we're going to be sending out a newsletter shortly, uh, instructing everybody what's going on with the church. I, I don't anticipate um, there being in sanctuary services until spring. Early spring or maybe late winter. I don't know. We vaccines coming out shortly. I maybe things will change, but hang in there with me. I mean, I don't like it any more than anybody else, but we have to be safe for everyone. So there'll be a letter coming out that you all get, and it'll document everything so we're all on the same page and we'll keep you abreast or anything that comes up that we that we feel you need to know that's the only announcement i got that i can remember is there any more we need to know the christmas eve service we'll we're going to combine them with the service on the 20th which would be Next Sunday, and then we'll do more music on the 27th. And then the conference is going to be sending out a, a service uh, that to be put on video, and we'll be sending out the link to that, that so you can be watch the conference and what they have put together for all the churches in our conference for the Christmas service. With that said, go forth, confident that God is faithful. Those who have sowed in sorrow will return with shouts of joy. Bearing the harvest of God's work, rejoice always.
The Lord is near. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, anointing us to bring hope to all people. Go and prepare the way for the Lord of love. Go in peace. Amen.